Right, this is an experiment with my camera resting on the bum bag. Um, which I'm also using to rest my broken arm on. I don't know if you can hear me, and I don't know what it would be like, but it's just giving my hands a rest from holding the camera for a minute, because it's quite a heavy camera, and uh, still videoing. Um, I haven't heard a lot about the Ukraine so much now. I don't know, it seems to have they, they can soon lose interest if there's no money to be made, I think. Um, we haven't heard any more about what's going on, really. It's, I don't really know. It's a type of stalemate, I think. Russia's playing the waiting game. Um, they started it, of course. That was so tight, they started that. It's disaster everywhere. It's really awful, our world. To be quite honest, and uh, the rich over here are treading on the, uh, the less rich. You can't say everyone's poor compared to other countries, you see. Anyway, walk along this nice track in the wood, coming up towards the water tower. Now, I haven't really bumped into anybody as such. But at least I know I can get the bus here when it turns up the bus, that is. Um, I've got another month of local walks. I'll probably do Sand Bay as well. Somebody coming now. Just take your time, chill. Let's take your time. Have a arrow. Can't even do it. I can't even undo this. Do a ripping movement. Yeah, I'm getting there, look. Oh god, there's a load of kids coming. They're the students. <coughs> there's a the water tower. I'll just do a diversion in a minute. This is where Eisenhower came in the war. It was called the encampment. And it could be used again for such things. You know? It could be. This is a nice little walk down through here though, isn't it? I saw, I thought I heard a gathering of youths further back. So, so, I don't know if they're coming by this way, they might be going down the main track.
Good day. Right, we've been out about an hour. I've been out about an hour. I don't want to go near the crows. Um, right, I'm going to turn off for a minute for the experiment with that. Right then, carrying on. I've just had a little wandering in my in and out the trees because sometimes you pick up some nice shots when you do that. Yeah, I haven't decided which way I'm going home yet. I have thought about walking up the beach. Um, which means I'll carry on down the path, which is which something I might do. on again. Of course the plaster, the first plaster they put on went above the elbow. Uh, the elbow is bruised but they don't think there's anything significant and with that with the sh shorter plaster on it enables me to use my shoulder uh, and obviously keep the muscles okay for the shoulder um, and to keep the fingers moving he said because what happens when they eventually take the wrist plaster off, things can be very stiff. But by wriggling fingers, doing a little bit of movement, um, you know. Anyway, I've decided what I'm going to do now. Yeah, I'm going to walk down this path all the way down to the bottom towards Burnbeck Pier. I'm going back that way and I'm going to walk up the beach. I don't care how long it takes me. I have what the only thing is I haven't brought the charger. So when this camera decides to pack up, it packs up. So what I'm going to do is, is stop videoing now. Just take the odd picture. I'll tell you why, because I might want to keep some for the beach. 
This doesn't last very long, this battery. And at the moment, I, I took minimum with me because of the fractured arm to carry. But I will start to bring the little charger out because it can sit inside the bag. Right, over and out then. This is Sheila, Worldly Woods, the 7th of February 2023. Getting out after a week. Um, following an injury to her arm and head. Resulting in fractures and bruising. And postponement of things that she had planned for now. Over and out. I can't resist really because I've been talking quite a few times when I've been out about how it's a healer for me walking and it's really got to live up to that now because um, I, I feel great just walking down here it's very calm it's, it's not cold it's not cold at all the frost is gone the blue sky has gone as well but it's very calm, there's no wind. It's like the calm before the storm, isn't it? Um, apologies for the swaying of the camera and the bumpiness. Won't be much bad than worse than when I do it normally, I don't expect. But anyway, I'm just enjoying this peaceful walk and I thought, well, if I run out of battery by the time I get to the beach, oh, I'd luck in it. Somebody coming along now with several dogs um, I don't know if it's a it could be the same woman doing a loop as long as they don't jump on me well she's not to know I've got a broken arm is she well I guess I'm so lucky to be able to be out here in this peaceful environment I need it to heal going back to the incident where I fell in the tripped over a curb and smacked my head in the road. Even though I knew my arm was broken when I lay there and people helped me up, the whole thing that worried me the most was a head injury. I worked in a head injury unit as a nurse before now. I've cared for people with head injuries. I've known people that have had in head injuries and died. Sometimes it's not even a massive blow. So I was worried about that. And anyway, they did scan me, Ed. One nurse wasn't going to bother. And then, I haven't heard any more. The consultant phoned me and said we might have to do an MRI. But it could just be an artifact, which sometimes is just a false sort of image given. Can happen. Uh, I informed them that I'd been thoroughly scanned by the biobank in November. Or October, round about then. And they did a very detailed scan of the whole of my brain. So I told them about that. The biobank don't always share anything, but they might do in this instance, because they'll want to know about me. They're following me for my life. So they'd be very interested to see if I have got an injury. I haven't informed the biobank yet. But I thought I might do, because they might actually do the scan for me. They might do. They might not. So basically, folks, I, uh, I just wanted to mention that, that I was very worried about the head injury. Um, I mean, throughout our lives, we all bang our heads sometimes. We hit them on roofs of low ceilings you bang heads with your friends you fall over and bang your head I fell off a horse several times um, you know we go through our life banging our heads and we've probably got loads of scars from it and most of the time the brain just heals and we don't have any trouble but you hear about people who just fall off a stool in their kitchen and die from a blood clot to the brain Anyway, it's been a week now. Now it can, sometimes it can go on weeks. A close friend of mine died. He'd, he'd had a serious head injury <coughs> on, the, on the beach. I don't know if it was on a motorbike or something. 
many years earlier. And he, then one day, he did fall off his bike. He was a bit of a clown. He was driving, sitting on the handlebars, riding it backwards and fell off and whacked his head. And then no one took any notice. And he was due to go on holiday to Turkey, which he did. Anyway. <sighs> Basically, it sounded to me, although it was all in Turkish and no one could really interpret the autopsy, that he's had her nation. He's on holiday and then he died from this. From this. He had complained of a bad headache. So, and that was a couple of weeks after he'd fallen off the bike, or a week before. So, you know, that was quite traumatic, really, knowing that. So you don't always get an effect straight away. So, I've only just started to notice my head. Uh, I didn't really know anything about my head being hit. I heard it hit, I knew it hit the ground. But I didn't know, it didn't feel, there was no pain. And even now there's no real pain. It's tender where the bruising is. And it was my brow, my above my eyebrow. Uh, so it wasn't the back of the head or the side, it was the, the eyebrow area took it. And, uh, and a bit of my nose. Cool, they've been doing loads down here, aren't they, clearing? Cool, they've done lots. I hope my crows don't try and find me here. Because <sighs> I normally feed them. <sighs> God, what's going on here then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're trying to um, expose the fort. So they've gone back quite a long, much further, haven't they? They cleared all this here. And down through there, look. Sorry, I've just diverted from head injuries to fort. I'm always doing my little observations of the, the fort and they are doing a lot of clearing. Their whole aim is to clear the fort and strip it naked to expose the Iron Age Hill Fort. <coughs> and that's what they're doing. And they're getting help from somebody who can come and chop a lot of stuff down. So that was a bit of a diversion from the talking about the head injury. So, you know, something I'm keeping my eye on. And I do intend to go back to see the doctor about my bang on the head. Because they shouldn't just say to me I might need another MRI scan. And then, don't, and then nothing happens. So, you know what I mean? That's a bit of a thing to say to someone, isn't it? that you've got a lesion on your head, we might need to look into it, and then you don't hear nothing. I mean, I said to her, when would the scan be done? Now, if you had a lesion on your head and it was serious, surely they'd do it right away. She said, oh, over the next six weeks, I thought, bloody hell, excuse my expression. That's why I'm going to, back. I'm going to go to the biobank. Now, it could be that they've been to the biobank and, uh, because they might want to see what my brain looked like before. I'd like to be able to see it. They don't show you nothing. I think if you're providing your body, they should at least show you bits. And they did show me a bit of my spine once, because I happened to be on the couch. And the, the x-ray was up and I could see it. And so that was, that was in good order. So what's this, no entry again? <laughs> you will be asked to leave. Yeah, they're just, my trees, I feel they've already taken old beard down. If I, want, if I wanted to go up there, I would. You know what I mean? But because I'm taking care today, I'm not going to worry about it. So it's a mixture of talking about my recent injury and the wood because I'm actually going past the main hill fort here and all these trees one day could be down, you know. 
I'm enjoying this walk though everyone. I really am enjoying it and I'm taking the steady path down and I'm going to end up on the beach and walk back to my home that way. And there's no rush, it doesn't get dark till half five, six now. And it's probably only about three o'clock in the afternoon. I don't really want to get back too early because it will have disturbed Z uh, Mag Maggie, that's Zara's dog. Because up until I fractured my arm, I was taking... In fact, Maggie was with me when I broke my arm. So she, I haven't been able to take her out. I can't risk a sudden tug on the arm or... Do you know what I mean? It's too risky for me to take the dog out. Because she can be quite difficult to hold if there was another dog came up or... There's too many problems. <sighs> anyway, I've been out today. And I've enjoying this lovely walk. And I'll be doing quite a bit of it, I should think, over the next... I'm just hoping the pain will ease up more soon. The pain. <sighs> you know, I'll probably rest it in the sling a lot when I get home. I am resting it now. It's on my bum bag. Um, I am resting it. I can hear the men with their machines as they <sighs> saw up the logs and that. <sighs> Don't know if you can hear them. Yeah, there's supposed to be secret caves and everything here. Overnight. 